keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. When I say this verse, what pops into my head is the bumper sticker that says, Jesus is coming, hurry up and look busy. Mm. As if Jesus would not be able to tell that we're faking it. That said, in an American culture that overvalues productivity and deliverables and always being busy, too often it is easy to see how individuals and institutions fall into this trap of measuring their faith based on what gets checked off of their to-do list. Recently, the CEO of the Walt Disney Corporation was fired due to the stock price tanking because of an earnings report that he provided that was less than desirable. Despite his best speech giving efforts to, quote, boost the numbers. Some of you who have run corporations know what I'm talking about. But plainly, he did not deliver the shareholders expectations and was soon relieved of his duties, save a nice contract fulfillment of $27 million. Or how about the tweet this week from Elon Musk that said he found a stash of t-shirts at the headquarters of his newly acquired company, Twitter. Shirts that said, quote, stay at work, punchline off of the stay woke movement productivity above everything else, right? However, I was pleased to read an article this week that spoke of the many national retail companies keeping their locations closed for the Thanksgiving holiday. Black Friday seemed much more subdued this year. I don't know about what you think compared to a time not so long ago when these companies competed to see which one would open earlier, beginning with Friday morning and then early Friday morning, and then slowly creeping into Thanksgiving evening, with finally some being open on Thanksgiving morning itself. You know, forget about the holiday. But it seems for now that the trend is declining. I would like to think Jesus was responsible, but I'm more inclined to believe that it was the virus that killed over a million of our neighbors. But I digress. You know something? There's a value in waiting. There's a value in being still. There's a value in remaining watchful for what's going all on around us. And instead of filling all those awkward spaces in life with doing for the sake of doing, all that busyness, here we come now to Advent, in the beginning of something new. And Advent is our seasonal reminder to wait, to be still, to be watchful, because Advent challenges our stories of faith to be more than just about what we do. And the scriptures today that were given to us, they point to a focus on a, an event that is yet to come, right? 
And when we put our focus on the scriptures and on this event to come, the coming of our Lord, we come to understand two things. Two things. The first is that we cannot rush God. We cannot rush God coming into our lives through any action on our part. Right? And two, we can also not just pretend that what we do has no impact on the world. That what we do has no impact on God's hope for the world. That what we do has no impact on each one of us. Because both of those points are true. We have no control over Jesus' return. Yet what we do now while we wait has an impact on what's to come. And so as today's gospel is teaching us, we carry on. Just like that t-shirt. Does it say keep, keep on carrying on or keep on keeping on? We keep on keeping on. We raise our families, right? We work our jobs. We do retirement well. I don't want to be retired because y'all are busy. But we do all of this with a patient awareness, right? A patient awareness and also a posture of action. But a posture that anticipates Christ's coming into our lives. The Abraham in the book of Genesis waited 25 years to see God fulfill God's promises to give him a son. But in that waiting, Abraham also demonstrated great patience and trust in God, right? And tell me, who who showed greater patience than the man as he took his son, his only son, up to the mountain to be sacrificed by God's command? At one point in the story, his son Isaac asked him, Father, what is going on? And Abraham, imagine this with me, looks into his son's eyes and simply says, God himself will provide. And of course, God did provide, right? Because that's who God is and that's what God does for us. And God rewarded Abraham's patience and more importantly, his trust in God. Or how about Joseph? It's the story of Joseph. Here's a young man who was treated so horribly, right, by his own brothers, sold into slavery, runs into problem after problem, yet he remains faithful and patient to the Lord through it all. And over 13 years, Joseph's patience was rewarded when he took up the number two position in Egypt, answering only to the Pharaoh. And years after that, his patience prevailed as he was finally re reunited with the brothers who sold him into slavery. And that's when he says this in Genesis 45. He says to his brothers, come close to me. Come close to me. And when they had done so, Joseph said, I am your brother, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed. Do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here. Because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now, there has been famine in this land. And 
For the next five, there will be no more plowing and reaping. But here it is. God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So then it was not you who sent me here, but God, said Joseph. God made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of his entire household and ruler of all Egypt. Look what waiting in union with God has done to Joseph, has done to Abraham can do and have done to you and me. Despite his trials, Joseph sees things differently now because he waited. God did not want Joseph sold into slavery, but because Joseph loved God and trusted God and was patient with God, God could take what happened to Joseph and turn it into something beautiful, something purposeful, Something that moves the needle of God's mission. Joseph didn't want to be sold into slavery or be sent into prison, but he also did not want to rule Egypt either. And yet here he was, taking the good with the bad and letting things play out. Was he nervous? Almost undoubtedly. Was he fearful? Perhaps. But he trusted God with a patient awareness of what was going on around him and a posture of action to be ready, to be ready when God calls him to act. God calls him to act. How can we, how can all of us here as a community of faith, find that space, a response of our faith okay. in God calling us out? Because that's what God has done to all of us here. God has called us out of the neighborhood to represent God. To be God's hands and feet in this broken world. How can we also keep our guard though? Against the danger of what we do. Translating into a ministry of busy work. Because perhaps this is the way it's always been done. Shuffling the, the deck chairs so to speak. Sisters and brothers, this is our challenge together. To find and name those places in the neighborhood where God is calling us to be and to act and to be there. Not with the expectation of a solution because that's God's to worry about. And God is doing all the solving, amen? Amen. <laughs> But be there with the patience, the patience that comes from a relationship, right? Built on trust and love. The same way God desires for us to determine what ministries, what work, while the Lord takes time and energy of passion away from the things that God is really calling us to be and to do. And I think we've done a very good job of listening to God in this place. Deacon Dia and I, as I've said, have, have we made plans for this ministry a long time ago. God just laughed at them. Because God put us here, as of now, to feed people, right? To feed people, to feed them with their bodies and to feed them in their minds and in their spirits. And that's what we've done. And that's kind of what we do, just that. Because that's what God has called this particular 
group of God's people to do. So what are the things? What are the things? I want you to think about this week. That takes us away from doing what God hopes for us. Because this week is all about hope, right? And what are the acts that we think God is happy with in this place? To get an answer from God takes time. It takes patience. I encourage you this season to wait, to slow down, to let those pregnant pauses be in your week. And when we answer these questions together, when we practice waiting together, what we're doing is we're discerning. We're discerning whether what we do, our actions, whether they are faith itself, or what we're doing is a manifestation of our faith in God. Doing things, is that our faith? Doing things? Or do we do things because of our faith? Because God has called us out and into the wilderness. I don't know about you, but I don't want what I'm doing to be my faith because when I stop doing it, and there will be a day when I will, that faith will be gone. Instead, I want what I'm doing to be a manifestation, a sign of the faith in the relationship I have with my Creator. There's a difference, right? And Advent is all about exploring and living into that difference with a quiet mind and an open heart. This Advent, let's wait together and let's see what God has in store for us. Trusting that whatever it is in this place, whenever that pavilion finally comes, that it will serve God's mission, that we will serve God's mission of thy kingdom come, thy will be done that we serve God's promises for us to be together with God. Amen.